First we start inch deep. And once Inkscape's open, file, document properties, or shift control D, we say change the width to 55 millimeters, height to 25 millimeters, because that's the size of my plaque. Zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, control and arrow key makes this move. And then you press the plus key, you can zoom in. Make a text box. Fill the space. And then we can start typing a name. Got to make everything fit. And maybe center it. And make sure it's centered into that little space there. Good time to save it. I already have one open, so I don't need to save it here. So then we go to extensions, G code tools orientation points. This one's really important to set this parameter. This is the depth that it's actually going to cut on the part if you set the surface to the zero height. And so right near I have it at minus 0.2 millimeters and that's to account for paper and a little plastic thickness. We hit OK and that puts the zero zero origin right at the lower left corner of this uh, piece. It also shows us 100 millimeters in the x direction, we have the minus 0.2 millimeter depth penetration, just like we wanted. The next thing to do is to go to extensions, G code tools, and tools library, and just take the default on this box and close. This generates a large text uh, box here with all the parameters for the automation. So we're going to use the text tool, change the diameter, oops, grab the text tool again, change this diameter to 0.1. Now I'm not 100% sure if that really does anything or not, but I'll do it anyway. Change my feed to 500, my penetration feed to 150, that's how fast it plunges down. And we need to change the spindle RPM because we have a spindle. And we're done with that. And it's a good time to save it if you're saving it. Okay, the next thing to do is a little bit tricky. We have to select the text box up here and go to Path, Object to Path. And then I also click Dynamic Offset. I'm not sure if you need that or not, but it seems to work when I do it, so I keep doing it. Then I go to Extensions, G-Code Tools. Path to G code. Next, we go to preferences and change the name of the file that we want. Let's just call this something else. And we have to set the height. Make sure this height is high enough that it doesn't hit anything as the machine is traversing. And the really critical thing here is you have to get off of this tab uh, or it won't work. It's a quirk in the code. Uh, I always go back to path to g-code and then hit apply. And if you do it right, you get no error messages or warnings, and you get a big old rat's, rat's nest here of vector arrows. And that's good. So when you go here and check your files, uh, lo and behold, I have the file that I wanted to create. Now if I go back to Inkscape and hit undo, which is control Z, and then I can save it the way that it looked before that big rat's nest of vectors showed up. And we're done with this. We can X out of Inkscape at this point. I don't need to save this one because I already have it saved.
Now we just need to line up to the corner of the plate. So we just jog over. That's pretty much right on the corner. We have to reduce the Z. And this is where uh, it gets tricky. So we want to zero X and Y. And then we're going to go move to the somewhere around the middle so we can get the Z height calibrated correctly. Let's go back to about 50 or 100 here. And we want to lower this until the piece of paper just sticks. Oh, there we go, a little bit too much probably. Yeah, that's pretty good right about there. And then we set Z0 right there. Now we go to send. And the first error we hit ignore. And it's going to move and start cutting. If it doesn't go deep enough, uh, you can lower the Z0 setting and hit and hit zero again and that'll effectively cut a little deeper so it's better to start a little bit on the high side uh, and then lower your cutting tool uh, if you're not cutting deep enough on the first first couple passes